Oh, sunglasses. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Heck. Heck. Friggin Do heck. I look pretty? Am I a pretty boy? <laughs> All right. You're, you're we're beautiful. Re we're ready. Let's roll. Hey everybody! Hey guys! Welcome to another episode. This time we're doing a very exciting car. Yes, it's I'm a very stoked. special car because this is my car. Yes, it is the Volkswagen Golf R. 2019. 2019. Right? Yeah, I'm 2019 so Volkswagen Golf R. So you've had this Which for how dope. long now? One uh, about a week and a half. A week and a half. Yeah, week and a half, approximately. I'm so excited. I've never driven a Golf of any sort. Neither. Golf, no. Yeah, neither did I yeah. before I got this. That's so great. I'm I got this and I am absolutely in love with it. Something you guys probably know about me by now, I am a huge hot hatch fanatic. <laughs> like my favorite car of all time is the Focus RS, which I know is overhyped to death, but I love it. And this one is another one that I really have been looking forward to driving. Yeah, it is really, really fun. Ugh. You can be such a lunatic in this, I love it. I love it, and it's so understated too. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Oof, rough start. Rough start. Six. There's sixty. Yeah. Shifts were a little bouncy. Shifts were bad. I kind of, I kind of botched it. That's all right. That's still fun. That, like, yeah. It pulls. I guess it's, it's like an element of turbo lag. Yeah. Maybe in this, but like once it really gets going and the turbo like gets to it. It really pulls, like it really pulls you back in your seat. Yeah, when you're in the peak of that torque curve, it feels really good. Like it, it kind of ramps up to it. It's not immediate, but yeah, then, which I kind of like. It's like, oh, here it comes. You know, it's coming. Yeah, it's definitely not an immediate burst of power like you get like in a Tesla, for yeah. example. So with with that, let's talk about the design. Like I said, understated. Understated, yes. On the outside, it's understated but classy. Yeah. I find. The one thing that really stands out on this one are the gigantic rims. Um, also, it has four exhaust pipes. Yeah, it does have four um, exhaust. On the pack, which is kind of ri uh, ridiculous, but I like it. I oh, think, I it, think looks, it looks great. Yeah, I think it looks sick. It's just sporty enough so that people who know what they're looking for will say, oh, that's a fast car. Right, you can tell it's sporty when you look at the details. So you see like the four exhaust pipes, you see the R badging, which yep. looks sporty. You see the front and like the black accents mm -hmm. with the blue colors. You can like get hints that this is a sporty car, but to the untrained eye, this does kind of feel like a sleeper yeah. in a way, uh, because it is kind of understated as far as hot hatches go. I mean, like the uh, the Civic Type R and the mm -hmm. Ford Focus RS and the Subaru WRX all look much more aggressive yeah. than this. This a is bit the more obnoxious. Yeah, this is the least aggressive hot hatch you can buy. It's the most like grown up adult hot hatch, which yeah. I guess I'm projecting on myself <laughs> by saying that I'm grown up and an adult. Yay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, I totally agree with that though. This one, there are a lot more touches of luxury. It's not quite so in your face. Like I'm a racer boy, but it does sound good though, doesn't it? Yeah, it and does. And it is quick. Like this, just because it's more grown up doesn't mean, yes, <laughs> just because it's more grown up doesn't mean it's any less fun. No, it's still a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. Man. Now let's talk about the, the badge on the back. What's special about that? Okay, so the badge on the back is pretty cool, I think. Normal Volkswagen badge, except surprise, it's not. Because when you punch it, uh -huh. you push it, and it folds open to like a handle thing, and then you pull that to open it. That's how you but open the hatch. That's how you open the hatch, but that's not the only cool trick it does. It's like when you uh, put it in reverse, the badge just like pops out, and then a camera just pops out out of nowhere. I love it. That is super German. It is. So like, it needs to be in the middle, it needs to be optimally placed, but there's a badge there. Well, let's just make the badge a robot. It's kind of over-engineered. Yeah, I love it. I feel like, uh, but it's kind of cool. It's um, great, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't have guessed that. But it's cool to watch, like when you're behind the car and you put it in reverse, the thing just, just, yeah, it's just like a pops little, open it's a and little, then the camera sticks out. It's a little mini transformer. Yeah. I think that it's a very plush, very nice interior. Um, it feels upscale uh, for the price. Certainly more than its competitors. Yeah, I, I feel certainly more than the Focus RS and the Type R and especially the WRX, yeah. which in my opinion has the worst interior of any of the hot hatches. I just find that it's very outdated. I think so. This is very modern, very up to date. Uh, the thing I love the most about it is the pilot, like just the, dash, uh, the, yes, yeah. the digital display. Yeah. It feels like you're almost like a pilot. You have everything right here. It's, that is really cool. Yes, it is similar to Audi, uh, Audi's vir uh, virtual cockpit. Yeah. Can't pronounce things, I guess. 
Like the inside of this isn't overstated like the outside of the car. It's uh, it's very refined, it's quiet. Everything is, there's a little bit of gloss black around here, which I'm really not a fan I'm of. I'm not a fan, yeah, I know. I don't like that because you get your like fingerprints yeah. and mm -hmm. smudgy little things on it. The fingerprints really stand out yeah. on the gloss black. But most yes. of it, that's just kind of centered around here where you're gonna be doing most of your poking with your fingers, but still. Right. Other than that, um, you have like kind of cool like faux carbon fiber yeah. accents a little I bit. I like this because it, looks like carbon fiber it, says, it looks hey, sporty hey i'm sporty it's sporty yeah but it's not <laughs> like that really um it's not the carbon fiber look that you always see it's a little bit different of a pattern which i appreciate it's like not trying to say hey i'm carbon fiber it's like, right hey i'm a cool sporty accent. hey i'm a cool sporty accent what also is cool is uh it has these lights on the side of it which oh, you, yeah. can't, you can't really see in daytime but at nighttime they glow uh, i love that. blue and uh, you get them on the side of the doors and you get them on the foot sills too. That's so cool. So you have like these really, really nice like blue accents that match, at least with this color, that match the outside. That's such a nice touch. Yeah. I mean, it's completely unnecessary, but I love it. But it's cool. Yeah. There's a little bit of hard plastic, but most of it's soft touch, which means there's not gonna be a lot of rattling, which I love. Yeah. I hate it when cars rattle. Yeah, same. Everything feels pretty sturdy and pretty solid. Yeah. Um, you have decent usability with this too. Like the glove box. The glove is box is nice. It's lined with fabric. So pretty it's nice. Not, not, again, not going to rattle. You've got SD right. card slots. That's cool. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yes. That is cool, You've actually. Got a bunch of connectors in here. That's pretty cool. Let's see. This thing, this thing is odd. The center console, you have to like really pull it. Yeah. It's the, probably because there's not a latch there. It just, it, it's open and closed. Yeah I, yeah, I don't think so. Kind of cool though. With the infotainment screen, um, uh, it's just pretty normal. <laughs> yeah. Really, like it's it's a touch screen, which is cool. Uh, it's pretty responsive. Like, it just, is. Just tapping it's quick. Here. It's fast. Oh, one of the things I forgot to mention, this has an amazing sound system oh, yeah. inside of this car. It is so premium. The speakers are by Fender. And That's interesting. Yeah. Fender as in like the guitar and speaker manufacturer. Yes. Like amplifiers and stuff. Yeah. Huh. Very first impressions. Very first impressions. Uh, <laughs> where's the clutch? <laughs> no, not really. I'm wondering, I'm just, the friction point in my car is Every manual car is always slightly it's different. Always slightly different. They're yep. all, all of them are always just like a little tiny bit different. I like the shifts on this though. Yeah, so far I, I enjoy it. I'm just adjusting my seat here a little bit. It's not the most precise I felt, like in the Lotus. Yeah. That had the most precise shifting I've ever felt in any car. But this is like good. Ooh. It's good enough. Eco mode, comfort mode, normal mode, and race mode. Yeah. And, and there's a custom mode. Which I presume you could make it like a softer steering and stuff. We haven't messed with the custom modes because yeah. we're just going to keep it in race. Right. Because it sounds so good. I, I have never took this thing off Take of it. race mode. Ah, I have never taken this thing <laughs> off of race mode. Not even one time since getting it. Yeah, there's no point. I mean, if you're, if you're buying a hot hatch, just put it in the, the sportiest mode it has. Yeah, it does have like bad fuel economy-ish when you do that. Okay, so we didn't That's talk true. about this. This takes premium gas, yeah. which is potentially a con. Uh, and, uh, you know. Which is more expensive, and if you're eating it all the time, it's gonna kill your fuel economy. Right. I, looked, I looked at my fuel economy ratings, and I've averaged about 19. Yeah. MPG in this, which isn't that great, but that's cause like, I drive it hard and uh, that's just kinda yeah, how it's I been. mean, if you wanted to drive it like a normal person, put it in the eco mode and just commute to work and back and be respectful of your car. Yes, yeah, so if you are a respectful member of society, unlike myself, and you put this into eco mode, uh, this actually gets pretty good MPG. It gets 30 MPG city and 40 highway. That's really solid. Good. That kills the, uh, the RS. Yeah, like this is, I would argue this is definitely more practical than the RS. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's absolutely the more practical choice. So this car, this car costs brand new $39,995. So compared to compared to rivals, it's pretty competitively priced. Yeah, they're all around the same price. Right. They're all they're all generally around that because the Ford Focus RS is about 42, which is the base. like this fully spec'd out mm -hmm. 2018 limited edition. Yeah. That one's about 42,000. Yeah. Just a little more than this. Um, the Civic Type R is about 35. 
Yeah. Right. And the Super WRX is it's probably it's like I think it's around 36. I was gonna say yeah, 36, 37. I think it's yeah in the 36 or 37 range for a WRX. It's really just personal preference. It's, yeah, it comes down to Hon that. Honestly. Like, do you want to be like the ultimate boy racer and make a statement? Then you want probably the, the type R. Pacific Type R. Yeah. You want... Something that can do more like off-road rally racing, maybe. Yeah. Probably maybe more the WRX. If you want something that's like the fastest and the craziest of all of them. With the, the greatest the, exhaust. Yeah, you do the RS. Yeah. And if you want something that's more like daily drivable, but still fun, this. This one. Um, which is the nice thing about hot hatches is like they're really fun. You can go out and almost have like a sports car experience. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people who are gonna say, oh, it's not a real sports car. It's like, no, of course it's not a real sports car, yeah, but this not. is the best possible hatchback you can buy out of the lineup. It's, it's the best possible, like if, if you're limited on space, right? Yeah. If you're limited on space, limited on parking, and uh, you need something that is practical, but you can also take out and just have like a riot in, hot hatches are definitely they're the way to go. They're such a good bang for your buck because yeah. they're less expensive than sports cars. They're more practical than sports cars. You're not gonna get as many tickets Right. They sound great. They're fun. Yeah. I love I love hatchbacks. Yeah, I think I'm, they're my favorite I'm, I'm, kind of car. I've converted. I'm, I'm a big fan after driving this. Also of, wagons. Of hot hatches and wagons, which we'll do eventually. Yeah, we're practicality hot, boys. Hot, hot wagons. Hot wagons. Um, I forgot to mention the shifter is like in the shape of a golf ball. Oh, because golf. Because it's a golf, <laughs> which I like. I think that's kind of a cool is touch. That, that's the extent of German humor. <laughs> And with that, let's uh, let's rate it. All right, yeah, let's get into the ratings. Okay, so first off is performance, which pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, arguably, like if you're competent, unlike us, yeah. maybe in the automatic, a 4.5 second zero to 60 yeah. time. I believe that you can get that in the automatic. Sure. I think in this, it's more like five. It's closer to five. It's closer to five to five and a half seconds. Yeah. Uh, still fun. The handling is incredible. The all-wheel oh, yeah. drive system on this is great. Um, Could be a teensy bit faster, I'd say. Probably gonna give it a six on performance. For me, this car is, it does exactly what it's built to do, which is throw you around corners at a high rate of speed and let you have fun doing it and not be scared. Right. I wish this person wasn't in front of me so I could prove it, but I think I'm gonna give it, yeah, I'm gonna give it a six as well. I think right. I'm gonna give it higher for fun factor than I will for performance. See, yeah, I, I think I'd probably agree with that once we get to that point. Yeah. Uh, in terms of practicality, surprisingly good. Yeah, very good. Um, you know, you can fold the back seats down and have uh, plenty of space to haul stuff. Like I drive around with my bicycle in this. Yeah. And just throw it in the back, and it fits fine. And cup holders. And cup holders. Can't forget that. I'm gonna give it a seven. Yeah. On practicality, it's like it's quite good. I'm gonna give it a seven and a half. Um, all right. I think it's excellent. I mean, it's got all the connectors you would ever need. Uh, you've got all the music stuff, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. That's true. It Did does have backwards. No, I got that right. No, it does have all that. Yeah. Uh, then on Fun Factor, where I think it's probably going to score the highest on both of us because I think this is a blast. Yeah, I'm going to give it a seven and a half. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm. I'm going to go with a seven. Yeah. On it. Next up is the Cool Factor, um, which. The thing is, I think it's probably gonna be pretty low. Yeah, it's a cool car for the hot hatch people. Like, hot hatch people know this car and they love it because it's a great car. It's a great hatch. But just looking at it, it's a regular golf. It's a regular golf. This looks just like a completely average regular golf, which for somebody like me, I like because I don't like having like a ton of attention. You can fly under the radar in this thing. Yes, you, you can drive fast and have a lot of fun in this and not attract much attention, which for me is a plus. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't put the cool factor really high. I don't know, maybe, uh... I mean, I think it's cool. I do, too. Not everyone else is. I do, too. It's just if give you... Give it a four. I'm giving it a four. Yeah. If you put this in a lineup against other cars... Yeah, I think you're right, honestly. I'm going to give it a four. It's not that cool. It's not. <laughs> Quality is next. Pretty Which good. I think it's actually quite high for yeah. the value. Uh, for the money, like we said, this has the best quality, in our, both of our opinions, yeah. of any of the hot hatches. Yeah, it beats the competition, for sure. Yeah. Um, so... I'm gonna give it a six. Six? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd agree with you actually, six. German cars just have great interiors. And then the last one is value, which um, I, I think, think is- I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty reasonable, yeah. Again, like for the price, 40,000 basically. I think I, I have to go with a seven on value, personally. I think it's a very good value for money. Yeah, 
I think I'm going to go even a little bit higher. I'm going to give it a 7.5. All right. I think this is a fantastic value. I, I would agree. Yeah, it's definitely a, f a fabulous value on this. Yeah. And then with the power of math, the total score is 38. That's pretty good. Out of 60. Yeah. And uh, again, I, I think that's largely due to the higher scores in both practicality and the cool stuff. Yeah. Like the performance. I think this car strikes such a good balance between those two. Yeah, I, I do too. It's it's a great balance between usability and fun. Yeah. Probably the best balance between that that we've driven. I think so. Because I think it's even better than the Model 3 in that sense. Yeah. Which is why I, I got this over a Model 3. So after driving this, I'm really excited to drive an RS so we can put the two head to head finally and just see what the differences are. We know this one's a little bit more fine. We know the other one's probably going to be a little bit more brutal. Uh, so stick around. I'm sure we will do that one fairly shortly as soon as we can get our hands on one. Yep, but and all the other hot hatches. And all the other hot hatches. We're going to do every single one. Stick around. Thanks for watching. See you guys. Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service for people who actually like to learn stuff. They have thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you like our show, you'll love their speed category. It's got a ton of content on cars and other things that go fast. We've recently partnered with Curiosity Stream to help build Nebula, our new streaming service. Nebula is a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, Curiosity Stream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long Curiosity Stream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. Curiosity Stream is home to high production value documentaries and nonfiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats, things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. Curiosity Stream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're offering Grand Test Auto fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com GTA. When you sign up for Curiosity Stream, you get instant access to thousands of nonfiction titles, and you'll get to watch a bunch of new episodes from Grand Test Auto months before they hit YouTube, plus lots of other great Nebula originals. By signing up for Curiosity Stream, you'll be helping not only GTA, but the entire educational community, as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up using the link below. We promise you'll love it.